One of the most popular Python libraries has launched an AI agent framework. This company raised $12.5 million from Sequoia and this is Pydantic. Pydantic is a library that has got more than 285 million downloads every single month. It's very well respected. A lot of people love using it because it provides a validation that Python doesn't typically provide. Now Pydantic after raising $12.5 million, they launched a platform called Logfire. And after that, they've launched something called Pydantic AI. In this video, I want to just quickly give you a glimpse of how does it look. So Pydantic AI has been launched. It has been launched with a note. When I first found out Fast API, I got it immediately. Fast API is one of the most loved API frameworks in Python. A lot of people who used to write uh, API using Flask has turned into F Flask of uh, Fast API because absolutely love it. Like Sebastian is amazing. Fast API is amazing. I've personally used Typer. Um, Fast API generally is like really solid. I was excited to find something so innovative and ergonomic built on Pyrantic. And if you know Pyrantic is also at the fundamental of Instructor as a library. A lot of Python, great Python libraries use Pyrantic at the fundamental. Virtually every agent framework and LLM library in Python uses Pyrantic. But when we began to use LLMs in Pydantic Logfire, there you go, there's a plug for their product. So if you see Pydantic Logfire, it is, um, it is a paid um, tool. So you have got a free version and you have got a pro version. Um, so this is Pydantic Logfire, an observability platform. I couldn't find anything that gave me the same feeling. Somehow there is I here, then there is V here, then there is I here. So I don't understand who wrote it or on like, from which perspective. Pydantic AI is a Python agent framework designed to make it less painful to build production grade applications with generative AI. I think the catch here is, or the main selling point here is that building production grade application. We have got multiple agentic frameworks like Llama agents. Uh, we have got a uh, crew AI, we have got a uh, Lang graph, and we have got uh, My uh, Microsoft auto by autogen. Most of these frameworks, if you try to stack it, like Langgraph is one thing that comes closest to the high level production grade. Then you would see Llama agents because it lets you write agents as microservices. Then you have got Crew AI and you have got PyAutogen, Microsoft's PyAutogen. So in this universe of a lot of agentic frameworks, there, there are a lot more like Py, Phi data is one thing that makes you write agentic frameworks very easily. There are a bunch of other things. So in, in, this, in this universe of agentic framework, we have got Pydantic AI. And uh, there are a couple of points that they have given why you should use it. First of all, it's been built by the team behind Pydantic and uh, the validation layer of OpenA, SDK, Anthropic SDK, Langchain, Llama Index, AutoGPT, Transformers, Crew AI, Instructor, many more. So as you can see, Pydantic is at the base, bottom of all these things. It's going to be model agnostic. Currently, they support three libraries uh, or three services, OpenAI, Gemini, Grok, Anthropic support is coming soon and uh, idea is like you can easily plug and play with this all these models which I guess a lot of people like. Type safe which is basically what Pydantic stands for. Control flow and agent composition is done with vanilla python allowing you to make use of the same python development practices that you would use in any other non AI project. Structured responses validation with Pydantic here you go RAP instructor. Streamed responses including validation of streamed structure responses with Pydantic. Um, streaming responses is like when you chat with uh, an LLM, sometimes you want all the responses at the same time. Sometimes you want to stream the responses token by token as the LLM is making prediction, which is quite helpful in a lot of situations like let's say customer support agent. So that's what they're talking about here. Novel type safe dependency injection system useful for testing and eval driven iterative development. I have to dive deeper into what does it mean, but I saw a couple of uh, tools connection with uh, the LM using this particular system that they're talking about, which is dependency injection system. So if you have got a response, the response doesn't directly go to LLM, but it also goes to the tool and then tool decides where it should go. And we'll see an example for that. Log fire integration for debugging and monitoring the performance and general behavior of your LLM powered application. Now, if you personally ask me why would somebody go use Pydantic or whether Pydantic can sustain, I think Pydantic can sustain with this AI framework primarily because they've got the validation in the market, not just the validation framework, but it is a it is a library that a lot of people love. Uh, people know that they've got funding and uh, their existing products are loved by people and they've got an observability paid platform. So if you try to make like a full stack uh, AI observability 
plus agentic framework offering where you can easily move it to production. I think Pydantic would be a tough competition to beat for other agentic services. But Langgraph, again, I think already has the full stack uh, that uh, we have been talking about. But whenever I speak to a lot of people who are at least exploring agents, most of them are trying at the crew AI level. It's not like, you know, they have a Langgraph or they are using Llama agents. So I think Pydantic is entering into the market at the right time. But, but you know, my my zone is very limited. Like I could have a selective bias when I say this. I would love to hear from you. What do you feel about? A very simple example. So from Pydantic AI, import agent. So when you import agent, you define what kind of LLM that you want and you give a system prompt that basically tells you what the LLM should do. So if you click here, register a static system prompt using a keyword argument to the agent, for more complex, you can see other examples. So very, 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 very simple example. You are running this agent in synchronous mode. First of all, I wouldn't call this an agent, but all you're doing is you're initiating an agentic framework with Gemini 1.5 flash as the LLM backend. And then you can go ask a question and then it is going to give you the answer back. I want to cover a very simple, but slightly more advanced uh, um, system or example, agentic example. And uh, this uses the three parts that are part of Pyrantic AI. One is the dynamic system prompt. That means system prompt is not hard coded, just like the example that we saw. There's a structured result type, and then there are some tools available. So this is an example of a customer support agent uh, for bank. Imagine you're calling a bank uh, customer support agent. One, you would want to know the balance. In another case, you would want to know um, if, or you would want to block your card. Uh, so maybe you're, you lost your card, you want to block your card. So for this, you don't have to put a human because you definitely don't want a lot of delay in uh, this uh, kind of a situation. So what you want to do is you want to have an L4. Let's consider this to be L4. So if you are if you have worked in customer support agent um, or if you have you know handled tickets generally uh, even in software. So you know L4 is like the lowest priority. L3, L2, L1. L1 is like the highest priority which you usually have like the most dedicated support agents or engineers to handle. So in this case, let's say this is our L4 or L5, instead of having like a community page, uh, you are trying to put an agent, uh, an AI agent. Now, if we have to look at the code, so the code is very Pydantic code. So from data classes, import data class, from Pydantic, you have base model and field. And from Pydantic AI, you are importing two things. One is agent and run context. So first of all, you need a database connection because when some customer is calling you and then saying or chatting with you, you need to retrieve the customer details. So you need a database connection. There are like two fake customer database details here. So one is uh, you've got uh, John and the other one is like, you don't have uh, any information other than uh, um, what is John's balance. So so this is, this is the database connection and uh, you are using a, a class, you're creating a class called support dependencies where you have got the database connection. So this is the class that you use uh, to transfer uh, connections and all the other things. Then you have got the support result. Uh, there are like three fields here, support advice, block card, risk. Block card is uh, basically a Boolean field, I guess. Yeah, it's a Boolean field, which will indicate whether the card should be blocked or not. Uh, so this is like basically what is the response back to the customer and what kind of risk level is available here. Now you are defining the support agent. The LLM here is GPT-40. And uh, you've got uh, the support dependencies, which uh, comes from uh, the database connection. You've got the result type, which is structured output here. That's the most important thing. Because any, anything that you're going to get out, uh, it's going to have these three fields, support advice, block card, and risk. And you're giving a system prompt here. One is you are a support agent in our bank. Give the sub customer support and judge the risk level of their query. Um, reply using customer's name. So this is the system prompt that you have given. And now you have a support agent system prompt and you're going to say, okay, um, what is like add the customer name? You have to get the customer name, which you get from this particular tool. So you're going to get the customer name. And this is the dynamic system prompt that they talked about. And now once this is defined, so you have one more tool. In this case, the function or the tool is supposed to get the customer balance and it is going to get the customer balance and return a floating value to indicate what is the customer balance. Now you have got the dependencies, what the customer ID and everything. So let's say the customer comes first and then says, okay, what is my balance? When the customer says, what is my balance? At this point, uh, imagine like if you have dealt with bank, you know, like first level of authentication is usually there. So the customer ID is already retrieved and based on that, 
the customer is just asking where is my what is my balance and then it says hello john your account balance including whatever this is this is the value which is 123.45 which is getting extracted from our fake database and then it let's say the customer comes and says that i just lost my card now you don't want to deal further uh, you are going to say i'm sorry to hear that we are temporarily blocking your card to prevent unauthorized transactions block card is equal to true risk is equal to 8 now the difference between a traditional software and an ai driven customer support agent is there is no sop here like there is no um, step one step two step three step four here so the steps or the actions are being driven by llms in this particular case gpt 40 so if you have designed software for traditional customer support you would know that you would have like the 10 rules if and else this is not a heuristic driven system the second thing here is that as you can see here it's slightly like a uh, dynamic prompt that they said here so you can see it is addressing with the customer name and they have basically designed a whole system which you can take and then connect it to, to your uh, sql database and then get this done i think this basically shows how you can use pydantic ai with the advantage of existing pydantic system and then fit everything in the stack that you are already using and this is exactly what i meant that pydantic AI might have a future because I was like when I started I was skeptical thinking why would anybody use a new agentic framework but everybody's problem with an agentic framework is it is not production graded so I think there is a strong future for it but I would love to hear what you feel about I would probably spend on creating some more tutorials on Pydantic AI I, let me know what do you think about or if you think this is another classical case of open source companies trying to do a lot of things just to is more VC money and then I don't know if they would fail um, I would love to hear from you but I'm quite positive about Pydantic jumping into this particular area see you in another video happy prompting